people of this country should think that the power of this BJP is only winning elections and mainly in the heartland states of Hindi and what we generally call as the Gomutra states. You cannot come to South India, you see all the results of what happens in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra, Telangana and Karnataka. We are very strong over there. Welcome, Chairperson. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak on the Jammu and Kashmir Reservation Amendment Bill 20, uh, 2023. So, first of all, coming to Jammu and Kashmir, seeing it as an union territory. As already said, it is always the union territory which looks ahead of going into a statehoodship so that they can have more authority. But this is the first instance where we see a state being converted into a union territory. And what is the main reason behind it? The BJP has just won many of these state elections and they have come into this house. They see themselves and their strength is always seen as winning elections after elections and going after micromanagement. But what happens in Jammu and Kashmir? Why are they not able to do that? Since they are not able to do that, they bring a state into a union territory where they can have control over the governor and then they can run the governance through that. If they were capable and if they were very confident of winning Jammu and Kashmir, would they have gone in for a union territory? So that is the main reason that the people of this country should think that the power of this BJP is only winning elections and mainly in the heartland states of Hindi and what we generally call as the Gomutra states. You cannot come to South India. You see all the results of what happens in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra, Telangana and Karnataka. We are very strong over there. So we, we will not be surprised if you have an option of converting all these states also into union territory so that you can come into indirect power of coming and having because you can never dream of setting foot over there and taking control of all these southern states. So having the reservation bill into confidence. So we should first look into the history because the Dravidian ideologies have always been strong and has been pro-reservations. So in the early years during before independence, the country was ruled by a minority of 3% people having a majority stay in all the government jobs, work, everywhere, education. It was the Dravidian ideology, it was our forefathers of DMK, the Justice Party, in the year 1926 that brought in the Reservation Act for work and for uh, education in OBC sectors and for all class people. Till then, it was marginalized and only a section of the people of 3% major of the people had the jobs and other things. So in the year 1926 was the first time that in India and in Tamil Nadu, Justice Party brought all these reservations for people so that people from all class can take part in governance. And what happened after that? After India obtained independence in the year 1947, it was struck down by the Madras High Court that these reservations shall not exist anymore. And then again, when we went to Supreme Court, the same, uh, this thing was done, that it was struck down and no reservation was there. It was our leader, the great Dravidian ideology of Principal Tande Periyar, who had, along with the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and the Law Minister Ambedkar, had gone and sought that we need reservations for work and for education. It is completely necessary. And then after fight after fight, at last, the union government, under the leadership of Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, agreed for reservation in work. But then, Tande Periyar and our leaders then struck it down. They said that if you give reservation only in work, who is educated? It is again only those people who are educated that 3% of the society will again get work. So they again fought. They had many, many other protests. And then, at last, in the year 1951, the first amendment of this parliament, the first amendment of the constitution after it was formed, it was then declared that the First Amendment, that there will be reservation given for both work and for education. And that is how education and work has come and reservation has come into place. And so many people, so many lakhs of people have got come into governance and other places so that we have a very good this thing. So taking the four pillars of the democracy, both the, uh, the legislative we have reservations. It is very good that we have come till that and now we have this government is also introduced the women's bill, which is a very good this thing. So, but coming into the executive, there is no 
reservation for OBCs. It is fully dominated by other castes, the so-called forward caste people, and a very marginalized section of the scheduled castes of the scheduled tribes. So we would like to urge upon this government to give more importance into the executive for OBCs. Sir, DMK is always seen as a champion of the OBCs. In the recent 27% of the medical quota OBCs, it was our government that had gone court after court and got the final verdict in Supreme Court so that we could have the 27% OBC quota, not only for Tamil Nadu, but for the whole of India. And it is only after our Chief Minister, Mr. M.K. Stalin, he is seen as the hero of the OBCs. Sir, again, coming to the judiciary, in judiciary also, it is fully dominated by people of the so-called forward caste. There is not a reservation for OBC. And so that reflects on the judgment of the cases too. And so we also ask and request the government through you, Chairperson, sir, to urge upon the government to bring in reservations for OBC in the judiciary also. So coming into the Jammu and Kashmir, they have brought in this bill reservation, saying that, sir, Tamil Nadu has a very good rapport and relationship with Jammu and Kashmir. During the emergency days, the father of Mr. Farq Abdullah, Mr. Abdullah was held, was held in Tamil Nadu, he was safeguarded in Tamil Nadu by our Chief Minister, uh, the, the then Chief Minister Kalanjar Karnanidhi. And still in memory of that, in Kodakanal, we have Mr. Abdullah's guest house still as a very renowned and a very uh, sacred place over there. And the, when the Article 370 was brought, it was our leader, Mr. M.K. Stalin, who had brought all the allies and fought against this very government in the heart of Delhi and we voiced out. So Tamil Nadu and Jammu and Kashmir always has a very good relationship. So here they say that it, the governed by Reservation Act because the legislation of JNK is not in place. Why is JNK legislation not in place? It is because of this government. And what is to be enacted by the state is now being enacted by this very house of the parliament. And sir, we would also like to make a very sincere request that the caste census, which has been pending for a very long time throughout the country, it should be conducted at once as demanded by our chief minister, Mr. M.K. Stalin. And sir, we told what are the struggles that we have got for OBC. But we see this government just handing over uh, by a golden platter the economical weaker section 10%. So nobody has fought for it. Nobody has asked for it. Nobody has protested for it. But this government is seen in appeasing the forward caste. And, but the same quota, the same marks for an OBC, SC or ST is much, much higher than what is being handed over to the economical weaker section of 10%. So uh, we request upon this government the, to look into that EW section and to give in more quota for the OBCs and to conduct a caste census at the earliest for this thing.